it is now time to get get our hands dirty and have a look in detail in the CXL class uh, provided in this project. Um, there are already a lot of functions available in there that you can use directly to manage Excel without even having to look for uh, what they do and they give you a huge uh, starting point and example to do whatever you want afterwards. So it's a very very good starting point. Let's have a look. So this is the CXL class. As you can see there are a lot of functions. Add graph, add sheet, align, auto hide, auto width, close, color, column sort, column width, copy, cut, delete sheet, error message, exit, font, format, insert colon, insert line, and so on and so forth and we are not going to go into all of them. What you need to know about this class is this. You create in your code an object of this class and it's done here inside this window. Inside this window what are we doing? We are doing here, this is the ActiveX control and in it what are we doing? We are loading the Internet Explorer thing. That's all. Okay, Internet Explorer and managing the error and again that gives you a very good example on how to manage the errors in this case. Um, once that is done in the window itself, we are doing this. We are saying that CLXL is object dynamic. We don't even have to say of which class, it's just an object dynamic, it's just a placeholder name. And then we are loading our empty file inside the Internet Explorer ActiveX. And then here we are just doing a new CXL. And why are we doing a new CXL? Well, because in the constructor of the class we are automatically checking if there is already an active object. So if there is already an active object we are getting it and if there is no uh, active object in Excel then we are creating a new one. So all that is already managed in the class. That's really what's great about it because really you can have a, a, a running start with that without any problem. And once we are done with the creating the object, which is just now creating a regular object, we can do whatever we want to initialize the window. And by example, we are going to do here uh, a management of all the fonts because all this control that you see here are WinDev control. And these are WinDev control that allow you to change things inside the Excel spreadsheet. So all these are examples of function. If we look at this one, what are we doing? We're calling the print function. And the print function is going to do this. Call the Excel print function. Get the active window, the select sheet, and print. As you can see, everything is already done, already ready for you. So you can start with that and really, really, really uh, use the Excel class. Now, this is just an example. There are other class and example available in WinDev. Uh, classes to manage Word. There's also a class that manage both OpenOffice and uh, Office uh, at the same time, which means that it doesn't matter which one you have uh, available on the machine, the one that is available is going to be the one that is used. So there are many examples available that you can use to go further uh, in your study of uh, automation. So, very good starting point. My advice for you is to just take this class, start using it, look how it works, and when you want to do something that is not in the class, then that's where you do the macro in Excel and look at it, how it's done, and you just add function when needed. 
Uh, this uh, class already tests for errors in the management of Excel. Let's have a look in detail. The only line here that is really working with uh, Excel is this one. M Excel greater greater uh, workbook greater greater open S worksheet. So that's the uh, only line that is working on Excel. But it's inside a when exception statement, which means that if something doesn't work on the Excel side, you will get an exception. Excel is going to throw an exception in your face. In a, the, the, that's the system of the uh, OLA automation. And here we are intercepting it and say, okay, if that doesn't work, if there is a problem, then we are displaying an error message with exception info, which is the, uh, the, the method that is going to give us the information about what's going on in, the, in Excel. And then we are re-enabling the exception and going back. So each and every line that is working with an outside program should be encapsulated inside a when exception specific to that line in order to manage the error because it's the only way to manage errors. And that is already done in the whole class, which means that when you create a new class, you just have to copy the methodology and it's working. So you should always code your function with OLA automation this way, because you, you, may, you, you never know when there's going to be an error in the outside program, and you need to be aware of it. So uh, also, this, uh, this class already checks if Excel is present and which version. In order to do that, it uses a, a function of the class called n version office. That is the, the function that I corrected uh, because it wouldn't work with the new version of office. Uh, well, the version, the 2010 version, which is not that new, but the code is older than that. So I corrected it, and in the new uh, example that is in uh, Windows 10, which you will have to correct it also. So, if the version is 0, then there's an error. If the version is less than 8, then there's an error, because clearly this uh, code has been made for at least version 8 of Office, which is the version 87. So, um, all this is already done in the class, and that's a very good reason to use the class instead of recording everything yourself, because there's already a lot, lot of plumbing available for you. Now let's have a quick look at the um, at the uh, n version uh, office uh, function. This one, uh, in order to show you the changes that I made, so that you can uh, know if you have to redo it uh, on your side. So if we look at the class, the n version office is here and what is this function doing it's running it's looking in the registry for the H key local machine software Microsoft office key um, if it's not there clearly well we have zero now this is the part this is the part that I modified that I added in fact uh, in the new uh, version of office you have directly the version available at that level in the older version of Office, you had to look at sub-keys of that level in uh, program sub-key, and then you would find the um, you would find the, the version. Uh, that's not the case anymore. So what I did in order for it to work with all version that I know of, I just added this code. I'm immediately looking if I can get a version, and if it's different than zero, then I've got the version and I'm sending it back. If not, then I'm continuing with the old key and see if I can get it with the old system. That's all there is to it. Now, there are some uh, potential coding problems, some potential pitfalls that we need to talk about. Um, the first one is something that uh, is asked about quite often in the forum. It's about the constants. Lots of um, external tools are using constant to increase readability of the code. And when you s find some code somewhere, either a macro, uh, in a macro, or uh, on the web as an example, uh, when you see some code using a constant, 
well you need to define that same constant inside your uh, your program or use the corresponding value and for that you need to find the corresponding value you cannot just put a string in there and hope that it's going to work it's a constant it contains a value generally it's a numerical value and the constant is text in order to know what you're doing so uh, you will find that again uh, in the documentation of the uh, publisher of your uh, OLE server. In, uh, in our case here with Excel it would be uh, by example 4 Office 2007 at this URL you will get uh, a list of all the enumeration constant things and, and that, that are used in Office 2007. Uh, you need to find that and use that. Then a second potential problem is about optional parameters. Uh, in VBA, uh, allowed, it's allowed to uh, uh, avoid completely optional parameters. They are just missing. Uh, this is not something that you can do in a W language. So in W language, when a parameter is not sent, either you use the star character or the OLE ignore uh, constant to uh, really fill the void. After that you have the variant problem. Uh, in some cases some function in uh, Excel by example, but it, it can be the case also with uh, any other type of um, OLE server, are going to use uh, for a specific type of uh, variable a variant type and not any variant type, really a very specific one. In that case, uh, in order to send that type of variable to uh, the uh, external program, you're going to use the build automation variant function. It's a specific function done exactly for that and that you can use only in that specific case. You cannot store the value coming from that, um, from that function inside anything in on, on the window file. You, you need really to put it directly in the line uh, in the function parameter you use the build automation variant of your W language variable and you send the, that result directly to the uh, OLE server. Then uh, you can have also a problem with the subscript of arrays. Why? Well because in W language by default uh, your arrays are starting at 1. The first item of an array is 1. Now in a uh, standard automation array the subscript start at 0. So in order to be compatible with your uh, W language side uh, you can use the automation parameter function and uh, change that first uh, line to 1. Uh, automation parameter can be used also for a few other things and, and one other that you should be aware of is that um, arrays by default are passed by address in uh, automation object and that is not the case in W language. So uh, to change to by value also you use the automation parameter. In any case, when you start working on a new uh, tool like OLE Automation, the first thing to do really is to read the help. Uh, you have no idea the amount of information that is available there. You look at automation and uh, don't forget when after you're looking at automation to look at, uh, at the other related function. Uh, let me show you. Uh, I'm going to put in front of you the help file. Let me resize that. Here we go. Okay, so if we're looking at automation parameter, we have everything about automation parameter here and it's important to read the whole thing, really. But what's really important also is the C also, because this is going to give you a list of uh, the uh, other uh, functions that are available that are related to that. By example, automation event. Uh, this allows you to uh, branch one of your uh, procedure uh, in, in, in WinDev uh, to an event that is going to occur on the automation side. 
So uh, really, you will have here after that automation objects, and automation object you will see all the things that are here, and in there different type of variable, dynamic automation object, and so on, and from there you find everything there is to know of the handling of the automation object inside WinDev. Uh, the, the help in WinDev is extremely rich and you need really to um, have a really close look at all the things that it can do. Also if you don't know what keyword to use here uh, don't forget to use the find or search function in which you can put different keywords, see what page are coming out uh, that are related to that and try different things to really find your, uh, your, your the stuff you're looking for. So that was about the potential coding problems. Let's review. In order to be able to use automation for Office, because here we are using an Office example, what do you need to do? Well, you need to be able to create an automation object. And as you saw in the example, it's two lines of code. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to copy that from one project to another. Then you need to be able to do a macro in Office and edit it. And I showed you how to do it. It's really not a big 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 problem that's quite an easy thing to do the next step is to be able to translate the macro and that means basically translating dot into greater than greater than that's the uh, main problem in the translations so that shouldn't be too bad either after that you also need able to be able to search on the web for constants I'm pretty sure that uh, you'll be able to do that too so all that is very simple now, what is less simple is you need to be able to learn VBA because if you want to do advanced stuff in Excel, it's the only way. It is not a WinDev problem. You also need, able, need to be able and be ready to do a lot of support on Office because as soon as you start using Office as an external tool uh, linked to your project, you will get all the problem coming from Office. Uh, suddenly VBA is not working anymore, the uninstalled part of Office, it's not, it, it's crashed, there's a new update that uh, changed things and so on and so forth. And all that is something that you have to deal with as soon as you choose to use an external tool. Now that was for Office, but for any other automation server, you need to do one thing, you find the doc documentation is out there somewhere if somebody bothered to write an automation server I'm pretty sure that they wrote some kind of documentation too and once you have the doc you read the fucking manual that's the only thing that you can do after that of course you can beg for somebody else to uh, give you the code already done if somebody has already used that ActiveX but the only way to be really in charge of your development is going to uh, learn an external tool. And that's about it for OLA automation. There's nothing more to it. As you can see, anybody can do it.